In mathematics the Laplace transform is an integral transform named after its discoverer Pierre Simon Laplace. It takes a function of a positive real variable t to a function of a complex variable s. The Laplace transform is very similar to the Fourier transform. While the Fourier transform of a function is a complex function of a real variable, the Laplace transform of a function is a complex function of a complex variable. Laplace transforms are usually restricted to functions of t with t greater than zero. A consequence of this restriction is that the Laplace transform of a function is a holomorphic function of the variable s. So unlike the Fourier transform, the Laplace transform of a distribution is generally a well-behaved function. Also techniques of complex variables can be used directly to study Laplace transforms. As a holomorphic function, the Laplace transform has a power series representation. This power series expresses a function as a linear superposition of moments of the function. This perspective has applications in probability theory. The Laplace transform is invertible on a large class of functions. The inverse Laplace transform takes a function of a complex variable s and yields a function of a real variable t. Given a simple mathematical or functional description of an input or output to a system, the Laplace transform provides an alternative functional description that often simplifies the process of analyzing the behavior of the system, or in synthesizing a new system based on a set of specifications. So, for example, Laplace transformation from the time domain to the frequency domain transforms differential equations into algebraic equations and convolution into multiplication. It has applications in classical control theory, mechanical and electrical engineering, and physics. History The Laplace transform is named after mathematician and astronomer Pierre Simon Laplace who used a similar transform in his work on probability theory. The current widespread use of the transform came about soon after World War II, although it had been used in the 19th century by Abel, Lurch, Heaviside, and Bromwich. From 1744, Leonhard Euler investigated integrals of the form as solutions of differential equations but did not pursue the matter very far. Joseph Louis Lagrange was an admirer of Euler and, in his work on integrating probability density functions, investigated expressions of the form which some modern historians have interpreted within modern Laplace transform theory. These types of integrals seem first to have attracted Laplace's attention in 1782 where he was following in the spirit of Euler in using the integrals themselves as solutions of equations. However, in 1785, Laplace took the critical step forward when, rather than just looking for a solution in the form of an integral, he started to apply the transforms in the sense that was later to become popular. He used an integral of the form, akin to a Malin transform, to transform the whole of a difference equation, in order to look for solutions of the transformed equation. He then went on to apply the Laplace transform in the same way and started to derive some of its properties. Beginning to appreciate its potential power, Laplace also recognized that Joseph Fourier's method of Fourier series for solving the diffusion equation could only apply to a limited region of space because those solutions were periodic. In 1809, Laplace applied his transform to find solutions that diffused indefinitely in space. Formal Definition The Laplace transform is a frequency domain approach for continuous time signals irrespective of whether the system is stable or unstable. The Laplace transform of a function f defined for all real numbers t0 is the function f, which is a unilateral transform defined by the parameter s is the complex number frequency with real numbers and omega. Other notations for the Laplace transform include or alternatively instead of f. The meaning of the integral depends on types of functions of interest. 
A necessary condition for existence of the integral is that f must be locally integrable on 0 infinity. For locally integrable functions that decay at infinity or of exponential type, the integral can be understood to be a Lebesgue integral. However, for many applications it is necessary to regard it to be a conditionally convergent improper integral at infinity. Still more generally, the integral can be understood in a weak sense, and this is dealt with below. One can define the Laplace transform of a finite Borel measure mu by the Lebesgue integral and important special cases where mu is a probability measure or, even more specifically, the Dirac delta function. In operational calculus, the Laplace transform of a measure is often treated as though the measure came from a distribution function f. In that case, to avoid potential confusion, one often writes where the lower limit of zero minus is shorthand notation for this limit emphasizes that any point mass located at zero is entirely captured by the Laplace transform. Although with the Lebesgue integral, it is not necessary to take such a limit. It does appear more naturally in connection with the Laplace dl just transform. Probability theory in pure and applied probability. The Laplace transform is defined as an expected value. If x is a random variable with probability density function f, then the Laplace transform of f is given by the expectation by abuse of language. This is referred to as the Laplace transform of the random variable x itself. Replacing s by minus t gives the moment generating function of x. The Laplace transform has applications throughout probability theory, including first passage times of stochastic processes such as Markov chains, and renewal theory. Of particular use is the ability to recover the cumulative distribution function of a continuous random variable x by means of the Laplace transform, as follows bilateral Laplace transform when one says the Laplace transform without qualification. The unilateral or one-sided transform is normally intended. The Laplace transform can be alternatively defined as the bilateral Laplace transform or two-sided Laplace transform by extending the limits of integration to be the entire real axis. If that is done the common unilateral transform simply becomes a special case of the bilateral transform where the definition of the function being transformed is multiplied by the heavy side step function. The bilateral Laplace transform is defined as follows. Inverse Laplace transform Two integrable functions have the same Laplace transform only if they differ on a set of Lebesgue measure zero. This means that, on the range of the transform, there is an inverse transform. In fact, besides integrable functions, the Laplace transform is a one-to-one -one mapping from one function space into another in many other function spaces as well, although there is usually no easy characterization of the range. Typical function spaces in which this is true include the spaces of bounded continuous functions, the space L infinity, or more generally tempered functions on. The Laplace transform is also defined an injective for suitable spaces of tempered distributions. In these cases, the image of the Laplace transform lives in a space of analytic functions in the region of convergence. The inverse Laplace transform is given by the following complex integral, which is known by various names, where gamma is a real number so that the contour path of integration is in the region of convergence of f. An alternative formula for the inverse Laplace transform is given by Post's inversion formula. The limit here is interpreted in the weak asterisk topology. In practice it is typically more convenient to decompose a Laplace transform into known transforms of functions obtained from a table, and construct the inverse by inspection. Region of convergence. If f is a locally integrable function, then the Laplace transform f of f converges provided that the limit exists. The Laplace transform converges absolutely if the integral exists. The Laplace transform is usually understood as conditionally convergent, meaning that it converges in the former instead of the latter sense. 
The set of values for which f converges absolutely is either of the form re greater than or or else re a, where a is an extended real constant, minus infinity a infinity. The constant a is known as the abscissa of absolute convergence, and depends on the growth behavior of f. Analogously, the two-sided transform converges absolutely in a strip of the form a less than re less than b, and possibly including the lines re equals or or re equals b. The subset of values of S for which the Laplace transform converges absolutely is called the region of absolute convergence or the domain of absolute convergence. In the two-sided case, it is sometimes called the strip of absolute convergence. The Laplace transform is analytic in the region of absolute convergence. Similarly, the set of values for which f converges is known as the region of conditional convergence, or simply the region of convergence. If the Laplace transform converges at s equals s0, then it automatically converges for all s with re greater than re. Therefore, the region of convergence is the half plane of the form re greater than a, possibly including some points of the boundary line re equals a. In the region of convergence re greater than re, the Laplace transform of f can be expressed by integrating by parts as the integral, that is, in the region of convergence f can effectively be expressed as the absolutely convergent Laplace transform of some other function. In particular, it is analytic. There are several Paley-Wiener theorems concerning the relationship between the decay properties of f and the properties of the Laplace transform within the region of convergence. In engineering applications, a function corresponding to a linear time invariant system is stable if every bounded input produces a bounded output. This is equivalent to the absolute convergence of the Laplace transform of the impulse response function in the region re0. As a result, LTI systems are stable provided the poles of the Laplace transform of the impulse response function have negative real part. This rock is used in knowing about the causality and stability of a system. Properties and Theorems The Laplace transform has a number of properties that make it useful for analyzing linear dynamical systems. The most significant advantage is that differentiation and integration become multiplication and division, respectively, by S. Because of this property, the Laplace variable s is also known as operator variable in the L domain, either derivative operator or integration operator. The transform turns integral equations and differential equations to polynomial equations, which are much easier to solve. Once solved, use of the inverse Laplace transform reverts to the time domain. Given the functions f and g, and their respective Laplace transforms f and g, the following table is a list of properties of unilateral Laplace transform. Initial value theorem. Final value theorem. If all poles of S f are in the left half plane, the final value theorem is useful because it gives the long-term behavior without having to perform partial fraction decompositions or other difficult algebra. If has a pole in the right-hand plane or poles on the imaginary axis, the behavior of this formula is undefined. Relation to power series The Laplace transform can be viewed as a continuous analog of a power series. If a is a discrete function of a positive integer n, then the power series associated to a is the series where x is a real variable, replacing summation over n with integration over t. A continuous version of the power series becomes where the discrete function a is replaced by the continuous 1f. Changing the base of the power from x to e gives for this to converge for, say, all bounded functions f, it is necessary to require that. Making the substitution minus s equals log x gives just the Laplace transform. In other words, the Laplace transform is a continuous analog of a power series in which the discrete parameter n is replaced by the continuous parameter t, and x is replaced by e minus s. Relation to moments The quantities are the moments of the function f. If the first n moments of f converge absolutely, then by repeated differentiation under the integral, this is of special significance in probability theory, where the moments of a random variable x are given by the expectation values. 
then the relation holds. Proof of the Laplace transform of a function's derivative It is often convenient to use the differentiation property of the Laplace transform to find the transform of a function's derivative. This can be derived from the basic expression for a Laplace transform as follows, yielding an in the bilateral case, the general result where f denotes the nth derivative of f, can then be established with an inductive argument, evaluating and proper integrals let, then or letting s0, gives 1 the identity provided that the interchange of limits can be justified. Even when the interchange cannot be justified the calculation can be suggestive. For example, proceeding formally one has the validity of this identity can be proved by other means. It is an example of a Frulani integral. Another example is Dirichlet integral. Relationship to other transforms Laplace dielt just transform the Laplace dielt just transform of a function g. RR is defined by the Lebesgue's dielt just integral. The function g is assumed to be a bounded variation. If g is the antiderivative of f, then the Laplace dielt just transform of G and the Laplace transform of F coincide. In general, the Laplace dielt just transform is the Laplace transform of the dielt just measure associated to G. So in practice, the only distinction between the two transforms is that the Laplace transform is thought of as operating on the density function of the measure, whereas the Laplace dielt just transform is thought of as operating on its cumulative distribution function. Fourier transform The continuous Fourier transform is equivalent to evaluating the bilateral Laplace transform with imaginary argument s equals i omega or s equals. 2 pi phi. This definition of the Fourier transform requires a prefactor of 1 half pi on the reverse Fourier transform. This relationship between the Laplace and Fourier transforms is often used to determine the frequency spectrum of a signal or dynamical system. The above relation is valid as stated if and only if the region of convergence of f contains the imaginary axis, sigma equals zero. For example, the function f equals cos has a Laplace transform f equals s, whose rock is re greater than zero, as s equals i omega is a pole of f. Substituting s equals i omega in f does not yield the Fourier transform of Fu, which is proportional to the Dirac delta function delta. Delta. However, a relation of the form holds under much weaker conditions. For instance, this holds for the above example provided that the limit is understood as a weak limit of measures. General conditions relating the limit of the Laplace transform of a function on the boundary to the Fourier transform take the form of paley wiener theorems. Moline transform The Moline transform and its inverse are related to the two-sided Laplace transform by a simple change of variables. If in the Moline transform we set theta equals e minus t we get a two-sided Laplace transform. Z transform The unilateral or one-sided Z transform is simply the Laplace transform of an ideally sampled signal with the substitution of where t equals 1, fs is the sampling period and fs is the sampling rate let be a sampling impulse train and be the sampled representation of the continuous time x. The Laplace transform of the sampled signal is this is the precise definition of the unilateral Z transform of the discrete function X N with the substitution of Z est. Comparing the last two equations, we find the relationship between the unilateral Z transform and the Laplace transform of the sampled signal. The similarity between the Z and Laplace transforms is expanded upon in the theory of time scale calculus. Borel transform The integral form of the Borel transform is a special case of the Laplace transform for f an entire function of exponential type, meaning that for some constants a and b, the generalized Borel transform allows a different weighting function to be used, rather than the exponential function, to transform functions not of exponential type. Nachbun's theorem gives necessary and sufficient conditions for the Borel transform to be well defined. 
fundamental relationships since an ordinary Laplace transform can be written as a special case of a two-sided transform, and since the two-sided transform can be written as the sum of two one-sided transforms, the theory of the Laplace, Fourier, Moline, and Z transforms are at bottom the same subject. However, a different point of view and different characteristic problems are associated with each of these four major integral transforms. Table of selected Laplace transforms. The following table provides Laplace transforms for many common functions of a single variable. For definitions and explanations, see the explanatory notes at the end of the table. Because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, the Laplace transform of a sum is the sum of Laplace transforms of each term. The Laplace transform of a multiple of a function is that multiple times the Laplace transformation of that function. Using this linearity and various trigonometric, hyperbolic, and complex number properties in or identities, some Laplace transforms can be obtained from others quicker than by using the definition directly. The unilateral Laplace transform takes as input a function whose time domain is the non-negative rails which is why all of the time domain functions in the table below are multiples of the heavy side step function. The entries of the table that involve a time delay tower required to be causal. A causal system is a system where the impulse response h is zero for all time t prior to t equals zero. In general, the region of convergence for causal systems is not the same as that of anti-causal systems. S domain equivalent circuits and impedances. The Laplace transform is often used in circuit analysis, and simple conversions to the S domain of circuit elements can be made. Circuit elements can be transformed into impedances, very similar to phasor impedances. Here is a summary of equivalence. Note that the resistor is exactly the same in the time domain and the S domain. The sources are put in if there are initial conditions on the circuit elements. For example, if a capacitor has an initial voltage across it, or if the inductor has an initial current through it, the sources inserted in the S domain account for that. The equivalents for current and voltage sources are simply derived from the transformations in the table above.